We just made it back to Fukuoka and it feels so good to be back. So last time we were here, we spent all of our time at the sumo tournament we went to, which was great. But we felt like there was just so much more to this place that we missed out on, so we had to come back. We've got our normal $100 per day budget, so put that down here to get us started. So of course we had to do all the standard getting into Japan things, like we made it through immigration, connected to the airport's Wi-Fi so that we could get our Ubiggy, not Aerolo. Ubiggy works way better for an eSIM here. We got some money out of the ATM using our debit card. Yes! Use some of that money to pick up this uh, little train pass card, Nimoka, Pasmo, Suica. They're all kind of the same thing. And now you can get a Pasmo or Suica card directly on your phone, and it works pretty well. We topped this bad boy up with about 2,000 yen, and then hopped on the next train into town, which only takes like 15 minutes. The airport's so close. Dropped off our bags at the hotel in Tenjin, where we're staying, and then came out here to get breakfast. The place we're going to is like right over there, and we were hoping to end this take as we were walking with it right there, but we totally blew it, and we walked right past it. But we're going to breakfast here. Okay. Maybe all these are the exact same option, but of course we are starting by ordering out of a vending machine as is tradition. Okay, it looks like they have different types of ramen, the four ones at the top, and it looks like it goes from like the softest noodle to the hardest noodle, or to the firmest noodle. Mm. And then all sorts of different toppings that you could put on. I think I'm just gonna go with the standard chasu pork. Nice. Just got spice on the bottom of it. Good stuff. I'm putting it. Welcome back to Fukuoka. Are you talking to yourself? Yes. It's 2.98 yen, and it comes with chasu to begin with, and then you can add the stuff. I added pickled mustards, and it's delicious. And I, there's a part of me that wonders if this is like legit, true, popular style ramen. I know Ichiran is supposed to be famous for that style, but. It tastes world different, and I really, really like this. Bye. <laughs> that was surprisingly really, really, really good. I mean, for the price, I was expecting it to be like kind of shma ramen, but that was sh amazing ramen. I'm sorry. <laughs> group of people playing a song inside of like a fancy sunglasses store and I'm very confused about what's happening but it's awesome. So I got show you what I think is rice mochi balls, but I don't know. And there is charcoal grilled. Mmm, savory, really good. Mm-hmm. And chewy and sweet on the inside. I love this. What I just saw was that they're apparently selling like a cheese coin for just 10. I gotta go find out what that is. Why does one say 500 yen? Oh. <laughs> so, the thing is, a 10 yen coin filled with cheese. The thing costs 500 yen. <laughs> this... <laughs> I mean, what am I gonna do? You know, like they had already wrapped it all up for me real nice and they handed it to me. I'm not just gonna say no. I bet it's gonna be really good. I feel pretty dumb. Let's check it out. That's a 10 yen coin. That's pretty good. Fluffy waffle pancake texture with a bunch of mozzarella cheese in there. 
Ooh. So it's like a 30 minute walk from where we are right now in downtown, past the park. There seems to be a parade going on. It just kind of like is randomly going back and forth. People playing music. There's so much life in this city right now. This is a very expensive 10 yen coin. Now we're on our way to the baseball game at Pepe Stadium, which is like a good 30 minute walk from the park. And each block closer that we get, we just keep acquiring like more and more and more people. And now we're just in this one giant long line of people all heading straight for the stadium. This is kind of a middle of the afternoon baseball game, which you might think might not be the most exciting, but from what I've heard, Japan does baseball better than anyone else. Okay, so there are a lot of different ways that you can get tickets to go see a baseball game here, many of which means translating your name into katakana or Japanese characters. We ended up going the easier route using Kluke, but I think we have to translate our PDF tickets, QR codes, into actual tickets. Here, let's see. From the very first pitch, it has just been non-stop, like cheering, drumming, yelling. I, just, I love the energy in here. It's also positive, it's awesome. I think it's time to go see what kind of food offerings they have here. and for your favorite players. Those look pretty epic. There's a KFC in the stadium. They've got fish cakes, fish on a stick. They've got some soft cream dessert that looks like noodles. And it seems like the two beers here are Kirin and Asahi. They had people walking up and down the stairs offering them on their backpacks, but they also sell them here too. There's a food hall. I think, I think we can leave and come back in. Okay, so so far it's interesting because in there the food prices are actually pretty affordable and pretty comparable to stuff that you would buy like at KFC or Moss Burger. All the options are incredible. There are a lot of them, but you can't you can't change who we are to the core. We're on a budget, so. Yes! I'm actually the most excited about this game because they have Family Mart outside. This one's habanero chicken. Mm. I'm a little bit nervous. Mm. So juicy. We're having way more fun here than I generally have at a baseball game. Everybody's cheering for the entirety of the time that the game's going on. There's never a moment in there when people aren't locked in to the actual game. And it seems like there's like an actual band playing and I've never, never in my life seen or heard a band at a baseball game in the US. Yeah, in every baseball game that I've been to, the number one thing that you went there for was just to hang out with your friends and then baseball was just kind of like happening in the background around you unless you were at a playoff game or like one of the very few very important games during the season. But for the vast majority of the time, you were just kind of sitting there chatting with your friends and then occasionally would turn to the game and be like, wow! Oh, something yeah. happened and yeah. then you just go back to chatting but here everyone is just locked into the game very like super present and very supportive of all the players you can tell people are here for the baseball oh yeah by the way the tickets were like $25 per person for the mid-level pretty good seats not bad <laughs> I 
that I would ever go to a baseball game in a foreign country and that was incredible. I mean, most of the time at baseball games, I'm barely paying attention, but this time I was always paying attention. There's, there's always something. Okay, so we're back in the Canal City area of Fukuoka. And you didn't think that we'd come all the way here to the birthplace of Tonkatsu and the birthplace of Ichiran and not eat at Ichiran, right? Listen, I can hear you, I can hear you. There's so many better ramen places in Fukuoka. I can't believe you're eating there again. You're wasting your money. Do you even lift, bro? S sometimes. Honestly, depending on who you ask, this is either a spiritual ramen eating experience or it's just being forced to eat your ramen by yourself in a tiny wooden cubicle. It would just feel wrong to come all the way here and not eat this. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Twelve floors. I don't know if this whole thing is like twelve floors of Ichiran, but I like hope it is. Because the music, it just feels, feels right. Two classics. What else do you want? I would like mushroom and mine. Okay, mushroom. Egg. Yes, please. Gotta wait 10 minutes to get a seat and then we'll be good to go. I have all these papers that represent the food that we just ordered. So we just got an order sheet where you get to circle your preferences. You can customize. French fries even, so I think we're gonna get some beers. And they even have eyeballs of different kinds. And craft beer. I feel like we lucked out with this place. Literally, we were just walking around, popping our heads in and out of different stores, and then we found this awesome place where you just walk downstairs and there's this entire room full of people who probably just bought off of work, having drinks with their friends. It's proof to me that not everything that is happy and good in this world is on Google reviews. <laughs> and this was all super affordable. This gigantic bottle of beer was about five dollars. This high ball, high value, was three, four dollars. I love this place. It's, there's so much energy and there's so much life here, and you can tell that people come here to unwind. So this is our hotel. It is day two. Uh, I'd give you a hotel tour, but you're, you're looking at all of it. There's a bathroom back there. I'm not going to waste your time showing you the bathroom. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. I won't subject you to any more of that. Let's get out and do some fun stuff. So 
for breakfast. We're doing another local delicacy, another local treat. It's a convenience store. Oh my goodness, why aren't you going to some like fancy local restaurant with some sort of like mega cool local cuisine? Listen, we spent a lot of money yesterday. <laughs> Like we blew past our hundred dollars. We only got a hundred dollars a day, so we got to make it work. Plus, convenience stores in Japan, they're out of this world. So, I mean, look at all this stuff. They even heat it up for you right in store. Like, you can get a loco moco. <laughs> get some rice bowls, we get some french fries. If you watch our video in Tokyo, you know I've got some opinions about the Lawson's chicken. But my new favorite thing is the Japanese McGriddle. I mean, they do sell McGriddles here. There's like, you know, there's, there's McDonald's in Japan, but this is way better. Lawson's boneless spicy chicken put in between two delicious looking and tasting pancakes with maple syrup already on them. Oh, yeah. Of course there's a hundred vending machines here. So I just wanted to talk for a minute about like the budget aspect of this series. And you know, like why are we eating DIY McGriddles from a convenience store and getting stuff out of a vending machine? There's a lot to say, hold on. So right, why a hundred dollars per day? Why only three days at each place? Like why are we making this series? It's a good question and there are a couple of big reasons. I think the first and most important of that is like, this is actually how we travel. And this is actually the budget that we're on. And then also this, Thing I've been seeing on YouTube, especially in travel YouTube, it's just become all these incredibly unattainable, kind of ridiculous experiences like private train rides across India and like $20,000 airplane seats, and those are awesome. They're really, really like exciting to watch and entertaining, but it doesn't, it's just not how we travel. That's not how anyone that I know travels. From the beginning of this channel, the thing that we've wanted to do more than anything is be helpful. We wanted to help people travel, help more people get out into the world. So that's exactly why we're doing this series, right? Is to be able to show real travel in the way that real people do it on a real budget so that way you out there can actually travel the world yourself too. So we go to convenience stores and we spend, you know, a dollar or two buying stuff there so that way we have more money to spend on awesome stuff like the thing we're about to do right now. I'm so excited for this. The last one was so cool. <laughs> like it was just one of those things that I've never experienced anywhere else. I just felt like you're transported into another world. Nice. Okay, so this entire exhibit here in the first room is totally interactive, which is amazing. So, as you walk up to the animals at the walls, they like either come towards you or they start walking away and then everything on the floor kind of reacts to you. And then there's this app here that you, you point it at the thing at the wall and then you're supposed to use this arrow sh to shoot them with love. <laughs> That's so cool. I caught a sun bear. High risk of endangerment in the wild. And then it kind of teaches you all about the sun bear. I just love how Team Labs took what everyone's already doing, which is using their phones and getting them to learn while they do it. It's so smart and it's so incredibly beautiful. I think we're gonna head to the next room now. I bet it gets even cooler.
10 laps, I did it again. It's just, you instantly feel like you're just transported into another world. There are a ton of rules when you come here. <laughs> uh, way more than you expected. Every single room that they go into before you go into it, they're like, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. And that kind of takes a little bit of the childlike fun out of it. But then once you get into the rooms, one of the coolest experiences you can have. They gave us the option to speed run the whole thing one more time and that's exactly what we're gonna do. That same Suica card that we had on our phone and at least has the plastic one that works on all the buses in the same way that it works for basically every public transportation in the entire city and actually everywhere in Japan. It's pretty awesome. That one. city so we're in this like vast labyrinthian underground shopping mall that's leading us to the train station and what are those yes. this is basically a tiny cheesecake oh my god that's good okay now we're ready to head off Okay, so we're at Canal City now, which is just a giant shopping mall. There's no other way to put it. So inherently kind of uninteresting, but every single night, every half an hour, they have this pretty cool laser light show. Okay, so now we're gonna walk through this Canal City area. This is just so like idyllic at night, and it's just so chill in comparison to some of the bigger cities like Osaka and Tokyo. It's just so nice. I love this place. Uh, cue the montage. bunch of those yatai stalls and they look great and they smell great but then we heard this music and just saw this like party happening over here and everybody like starting all sorts of different meats on fire and this just I don't know this seemed awesome <laughs> we just we were so excited we had to check this thing out the yatai stalls are definitely like a very iconic thing here but like this is too this is like a yatai stall party What'd you get? Being from Wisconsin, I try to get a brat basically everywhere that I go. Ooh, very herby. Oh yeah! Okay. Picture of the You know, when we were first planning this video to come to Fukuoka, I felt like I didn't, I didn't know what to say. You know, like, 
it doesn't have the giant temples like Kyoto has, and it doesn't have like the super big food market like Osaka does, and it doesn't have the friggin' everything like Tokyo does. But then I realized that Fukuoka is just all of those things combined. It's just like the incredible temples and the street food and the night markets and the yatai stalls and just the constant surprising awesomeness that happens every single day here. All within this affordable, approachable package. It's not overwhelming, it's just it's just right. It's just non-stop awesome here at Fukuoka. Alright, that is it for today. We're calling it. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, we're at Pork Tamago Onigiri. So I think this is kind of like a spam musubi it looks like, but with just more awesome stuff put on top of it. The spam cans on the wall. Lucky number seven, so we're just waiting for our food to come up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So savory, so spammy, so eggy, very filling, and then like nori is like nicely wrapped around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. This is delicious. Obviously, this is a bit different than the spam which should be used at the ABC store. It's bigger, first of all. It's like a sandwich. Man, I really like the I really like the vegetable edition. It's so tasty. It's about 500 yen, which is like three dollars, about the cost of a much meat. Spam sandwich, you are so good to me. So right now we're standing in front of our first temple and we're gonna spend a little bit of time going through like old town Fukuoka and then we're gonna slowly work our way to like newer town Fukuoka. in the big city. I love that there's just like an entire walk of just peaceful shrines and temples scattered throughout this old town. It's so peaceful and pretty. Okay, we just got a quick stop back at our hotel. I got to put on my fancy dress t-shirt. Uh... What kind of dinner are we? We're having some local Fukuoka food. So where are we? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, the first time we came to Fukuoka, it was kind of an accident. We got tickets to the Grand Sumo Tournament and we might not have come otherwise. We honestly probably wouldn't have ended up making this video without that happening in the first place. But what a huge mistake that would have been. On that trip, we experienced sumo, wandered the beautiful canals, and most importantly made some awesome friends, like the ones that invited us out tonight, for a uniquely Fukuoka meal called motsunabe, or beef tripe stew. Uh, this is motsunabe oishi. And motsunabe is a... No, not matsu. Motsunabe. Motsunabe. Motsu means inside. Okay. It's in, in oh inside like the intestine. 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 Also beef intestine. Beef intestine. Is that beef? You? You mean beef. Oh, 
this delicious bubbling concoction, we talked about our three days here, what we loved and what we do differently. Baseball game, definitely would do that again. Same with Team Labs. We would for sure stay in tension again, and that festival was just awesome. I recommend going to Zaifu. And we probably should make time for Dazaifu, that massive temple that's just like 30 minutes away. How do you feel about Ichiran? Do you think Ichiran is a good example of ramen? Maybe we'll try something other than Ichiran next time, especially after that review. Yes, this is very special. The food has been very very good here. Reasonable. $100 per day felt just right here. In fact, I think for the first time we even have a little bit left over. We couldn't quite find the right words to sum up some of the more intangible things that made Fukuoka special, but luckily our friend did. If you're from America, you pretty much only come to Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, maybe Sapporo, and then to the Yes. And I think, I think this is I think this place is up and coming. Like I feel like this is the next place. Yes. But I, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. I don't know what the right words are to describe. It's less crowded. Yes. Uh, good ingredients for food. Therefore, uh, very reasonable. Most important part, I think, is uh, uh, good access from anywhere, from anywhere to anywhere. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. For That's example, true. from the, the airport, how long did it take? Mm. 10 minutes. Yes, yes, yes. Very, short. very convenient. Mm. Very convenient. Uh, That's true. Hakata Station Hakata, yes. is very convenient. Mm. There's a nice, there's always people outside walking, but it's very peaceful. And and the, the canals are beautiful. It's like a calm place to be. Mm. Yeah. Do you know why? Mm. The walking speed is different from Tokyoites. Oh, really? Slower? Slower here in Tokyo. I like Tokyoka. that. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I walk slow. It's so good to see you. Yes, for hours. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, one last thing to do. I mean, we can't leave Fukuoka without going to one of the famous yatai stalls, right?